begins at the continuous casting furnace, where the raw materials are smelted to produce coinage alloys like cupro nickel, brass, and aluminium bronze. Throughout the process, materials are transported to and from the various stages of the production process via automated guided vehicles or AGVs, which make a large contribution to the safety and efficiency of the working environment. The alloy is extruded through a die set to produce 1.5 ton coils, which are then milled to micron exact thicknesses. These finely prepared coils then pass through blanking machines which punch out the blanks, which are then rimmed to give the edges a smooth surface. The blanks then pass through the deburring machine to remove any residual burrs. The smooth blanks are first annealed in a furnace to prepare them for the coining process and then polished to yield a high quality finish while the non-alloy blanks are placed in barrels and immersed in electroplating bulbs to receive their coating of copper, nickel or bronze. And then it's the turn. are tested and simulated. Craftsmanship and state-of-the-art technology go hand-in-hand hand at every step along the way. The pressing tools are created with the utmost precision, then it's off to production. In the press shop, the steel is treated at high temperatures to improve the strength characteristics. In the body shop, robots do most of the heavy work. Next stop, the paint shop. Modern cutlery can be made from a variety of substances. At this factory, they use steel, which is plated with chromium nickel. It doesn't rust, and more importantly, it doesn't affect the flavor of the food, which some metals can do. Blanks are cut from a sheet of metal, and this sheet is ideal for making both spoons and forks. However, at this point, the metal is thick enough for the handle, but too thick for the working end, so it needs to be flattened. To make spoons, the ends need to be wider, so the metal is pressed more often. What the worker ends up with looks like a miniature shovel, hardly the right shape for soup. 
So the shovel blade is cut into the right shape, then it's put into this press which will transform it into a shapely bowl. While the spoon bending is going on in one part of the factory, other workers are forging forks. Again, they need to shape the little shovels first, so a press will cut off any unnecessary metal. These blanks are now passed on to this worker who has the most important job in fork production. All day long he sits here carving splines into the forks. Splines are the pointy bits you spear your food with. Washing forks is fiddly enough, but if you're making luxury dinnerware you also have to make sure you wash the press before you can actually do any bending. Any dirt would mark the metal and the fork would have to be thrown out. The freshly bent cutlery is then sent off for a quick polish to remove all the sharp edges. The worker will also grind down the surfaces so there aren't any unwanted fork related injuries. So we've seen the forks and the spoons, but what about the knives? Whereas forks and spoons are made from one piece, the knife is made out of several. The handles for these knives have two sides which will be joined together, leaving a hollow in the middle. The reason for this will become clear later. But first we need a blade. These are made up of stainless steel and need to be shaped so they're sent off to the furnace to be warmed up. Once they're hot enough, the blacksmith will remove them with his tongs and hammer them into shape using a huge press. Then using another press he will cut out the blades from the hammered steel. These are then fed back into the furnace so they can be hardened. When they emerge, they're tough inside but filthy outside. You certainly wouldn't want to use one to butter your toast with, so they're sent to an automated grinder to be scraped clean. Now it's time to put the blade and handle together. The two sides of the handle have been joined and the worker will now fill this with sand. This gives the knife a good weight in the user's hand. Next comes a quick pinch of resin and it's time to glue the whole lot together. Wonky Sunday silverware just wouldn't do, so this bizarre contraption helps him align each knife. Molten metal is poured in with the sand. The resin he added creates a bond between the two, making the handle solid. The blade then becomes a lid to seal the handle tight. Of course, now everything is filthy again, so the new cutlery needs a good shine. And what use would a knife be without a sharp edge? 